a little bit about IBS or irritable bowel syndrome and the low FODMAP diet. The low FODMAP diet was developed by Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. And there's probably about 30 years of research now behind this approach. So what are FODMAPs? They are fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides and polyols. They are basically fermentable carbohydrates that in certain people, they can be problematic. They may be malabsorbed in the small intestine, pass into the large intestine, be fermented by bacteria, causing bloating and some painful sensations because research has shown that those of IBS may have a more sensitive gut and a more sensitive interaction between the gut and the brain. It's very important before you embark on this dietary therapy to get an actual diagnosis of IBS. So working with a gastroenterologist, and this may take a long time, but be patient with it. In fact, this is important. You want to rule out inflammatory bowel disorders such as Crohn's, or uh, you also want to rule out celiac disease. So you may even need to do a gluten challenge to check for that. But once you have that diagnosis, find a dietitian who's trained in this approach and it may help you. Up to two thirds or two thirds or three quarters of people respond well to this. So in phase one, you omit FODMAPs from your diet for a period of two to six weeks and kind of settle the symptoms down. And then in phase two, you're going to reintroduce each type of FODMAP to the diet to see which one is a trigger for you. So lactose, like your milks and your cheeses, or excess, excess fructose, like mangoes, figs, apples, asparagus, watermelon, fructans, onions, garlic, dried fruit, persimmon, nectarine, wheat, barley, uh, uh, GS, GOS, galacto-oligosaccharides, legumes, pistachios, and cashews, or the polyols. These are often found in artificial sweeteners like sorbitol, um, mannitol, apples, apricots, blackberries, cauliflower, mushrooms. So then you slowly introduce them one by one, increasing the amount, keeping a food and symptom diary to see which are your triggers. Phase two is really important because you don't want to get stuck in phase one because your diet may be too limited and not nutritionally adequate. And hey, you may be able to have mushrooms if you love them, but just in a smaller amount than you had previously. So it will make your diet and your life more enjoyable to, to, to go through the challenge and then get to the third stage where it's a tailored individualized plan for you. So give me a call if you'd like to discuss this further. And as I say, there's some wonderful resources out there the, the app from Monash University is fantastic and it tells you the list of foods and what they're high in. It allows you to go through the phases and then as you go through the challenges, you can reset it for you. So it will help you going forward. It also has the ability to keep a food and symptom diary going through phase two and three. Very great resource and Kate, Scolata is an amazing resource, an American dietitian who's a world expert in this. She has lots of handouts on her website and has published lots of books with recipes. So let me know if I can help.